Tonight I'm going to show you how to do the detail drawing for the Finn project in SOLIDWORKS 2018-2019 as they call the educational version. So over here we have the Finn drawing with its dimensions that you used initially to make the, the 3D model of the Finn. Your next step in making your, your drawing would be, making your model would be to make the detail drawing of it. These are great if I'm going to send this directly to a CNC or directly to a piece of equipment. They're not great if I want to send it to the customer to look at for dimensions. Because if I send them the model, I'm actually sending them the actual recipe to make the part. Get what I'm saying there? I'm not telling them what material they're going to use and I'm not giving them the machining processes, but I'm giving them all the actual technical work of building a 3D model. So I never want to send a 3D model to my customer. I want to send them a PDF of a detail drawing. They're per they, all they need to do is approve the dimensions that are on the drawing, period. So I never want to send them the model. To start a detail drawing, you can actually just go straight over here, file, and you have the opportunity, make drawing from part. Okay, again, up here, if you locate your mouse, file, make drawing from part. Now, this is the first time I'm using this feature in this software, so I'll get this dialog box. In the future, it probably won't, just a word of caution. So when I look at this, I don't, is this inches? Yes, it is. This is an inch drawing, the dimension standard. Do we want to use ISO? Nah, we don't want ISO. ISO is for what kind of drawings? Met metric, first angle projection metric drawings. This is not going to be that. Okay, it's not going to be the German either. Not the Brits. Uh, ANSI. It's an inch drawing. So we're going to use ANSI standards. Got it? IPS, inches, pounds, seconds. If it was metric, of course, I'd pick millimeters, grams, seconds. Okay? Inches and ANSI. Remember that. So when we talk about drafting standards in other classes and, and what are the standards out there, I'm not making that stuff up. These are real standards. So there it is. ANSI. It comes up when you say to create a drawing. So once we're in here, it's going to ask me now what kind of paper do I want. Because I picked ANSI, I automatically have A size paper, B size paper, the type of paper that I'd be able to use on a normal printer here in the US. So it's ANSI landscape or portrait. Portrait is lengthwise landscape, you know, just like paper, you know, landscape versus portrait. This particular part, we're going to assume landscape. Standard sheet size, there's a little preview. When I hit OK, it creates the detail draw, like the, the, the border back here. And on the side, what automatically appears are the different views that I can drag in. This doesn't always happen, just be aware that it might. The reason I say it doesn't always happen is because if you're using your computer at home, whatever you did the first time, it typically remembers that, so it tends to, to do it that way in the future, so it might not pop up this way. So be aware of that reality, okay? So if it doesn't show up for some reason, you can go under here for standard views over there. It's the same thing. So I don't know. If you've tried to create a detailed drawing already, you might not see the same things that I'm seeing on this screen. So be aware of that. So for now, <clears throat> we've got the different view choices. We don't necessarily know which one we're going to use. When we look at this thing, when you hand sketched it out for yourself, what were you thinking? What would be the views you'd want? Okay, we'll want a front view. Top view. Well, Dina, we can't automatically do a sectional, but I agree with you. That's a good idea. Do we make it isometric? Yeah. Okay. About for now, about right? They come automatically when I drop the first one. It gives me that option. As I move my mouse around, the different options appear automatically. When I'm done selecting the views that I want, I can just hit OK, and voila, they're there. Now, let's talk about idiosyncrasies. SOLIDWORKS presumes that you don't want hidden lines on your detail drawing. 
It presumes that. That is a default setting to hide all hidden lines, which, by the way, is wrong for 90% of detailed drawings. I'll give them 10%. I'll say that. But apparently, 99.9% .9 of the time, our detailed drawings need to show hidden lines. Okay? None of these views have hidden lines in them. So you need to, I'm going to drag this out. I, I can't stand center lines that are inside of a part. Sorry. So i got to drag these puppies up. Nine times out of ten, you need detail, You need your detail views to have the hidden lines in them. So what you would do to make that happen, and you need to remember this, trust me, because this is a common mistake. People will omit their detail. Their detail drawings will have no hidden lines in them. They'll omit them because they don't know any better. So I'm telling you up front. It's a good test if you're trying to get a job and ask the person, so, nice drawing you just did to become employed at this company. Where are all the hidden lines? Okay? There ain't, you know, you don't want to sit there and sweat on that subject, trust me. So to fix that, all you do is click on the view, and to the left appears the settings for that view. Whatever is going on. In this case, the display style, right now the default is hidden lines removed. That's the default display style. Out of the box, install the software, and run it. That's the default setting. That's how these computers are set in this room. Once you change those settings, for those of you that use your personal laptops, those settings will stick because you can. You can go into settings and change everything and fix it. I'm intentionally making you operate in an out-of-the-box format here. So you need to change the display style to hidden lines. Once you do that, because that's the primary view, the first one that was brought in, it affects all the other views. Now, granted, yeah, I want hidden lines here and I want hidden lines here. Do you want hidden lines in your, isom in, in your isometric view? No. So for that one, Nah, I don't want hidden lines. You actually have to intentionally pick that view. Okay? In Inventor, it always excludes the isometric in whatever you do. It presumes you don't want the isometric to have hidden lines. That's the default. Everything else, it assumes you want hidden lines. Little FYI, idiosyncrasies are the product. It's important to know that. Next, the other idiosyncrasy. Do I want my isometric to be the same size as my front view and top view and right view? Not necessarily, no. I want to maximize the size and of my views for my customer, my client, to view the dimensions. The isometric is there just as a representative of the object. So it doesn't have to be the same size as everything else. So here, under scale, you would change it to use a custom scale, and maybe you put quarter scale or something smaller. Get it? Now, you can put that in the corner. Anything else wrong in this detail drawing that we don't like? Anyone want to throw anything they wish would change? Let's open this up. These views are kind of tiny, right? They're half scale. Why are they so small? It has the world's largest title block. <laughs> Uh, it has the world's largest title block is the reason. Don't ask me why, but they have this massive title block that hogs up a serious amount of space. All the other type of drawings I've ever had you guys do in other classes, have you noticed how the title blocks are slim and at the bottom? And that's how they are at most companies, to be honest. And when you have a title block on a B size or a C size drawing that's of this size, it's not such a bad thing. But a title block of this magnitude on a little A size drawing is pretty intense. This thing hogs up a good quarter, 25% of the real estate. So if you really want to change that title block. Now, unlike Inventor, Styleworks does not have a petite A size title block option. It only has this. So you have to create it. You have to change it. So to change it, let's think. What are different ways we could change it? 
when we go to sheet and we do right mouse button we say edit sheet format oh that brought me into it hold on i wanted to experiment a little bit with you i hate it when i do it right the first time i want to show you some wrongs first i go to sheet right mouse button properties okay that's a good one to go into properties when i go into properties i've got sheet the name of the sheet you could change it i'm going to change mine just because I want to. There, that's the name of my sheet now. The scale, half scale, that's fine. It doesn't matter what the scale is. Now, type of projection. First angle, third angle. It's an inch drawing, so third angle is correct. If it was a metric drawing, I'd want a first angle, so keep that in mind. The view label, meaning like sectional view, whatever kind of view, A is fine. Standard sheet size, that's fine. Uh, that's it. But you know what? It doesn't have anything in here about my title block. Under zone parameters, what that is, that's referring to, remember these things like B2, quadrant B2? So that this doesn't really mean much on an A-size drawing, but if I had a massive C-size print and I was talking to somebody on the phone and they were looking at a PDF of the print, I'd tell them, go to B1, that's where you'll see the isometric view. Get it? It's like a map. A2, B2, B1, get it? A1. So you can, if I have a very large blueprint, I like to use that as a guide to help somebody go to the correct, instead of the upper right corner of the drawing, or it's somewhere in the middle. <laughs> so that's what that is. Doesn't matter what you have, it's okay. Margins, if they have a half inch margin, could I tighten up the margin? Let's see what a quarter inch margin would be nicer. Because a half inch takes up a lot of room. Uh, now watch. I had apply changes. It tightens it up. But what else does it do? <laughs> what did it do with my quadrant references? It just bounced them out. So now they're off the paper, which is annoying. Okay. So it is annoying. But that, that's, that's if you go to, um, when you click on sheet, right mouse button and go to properties. Under zone parameters, that's where that is. Okay. Right now, the distrib distribution is 50 um, evenly sized is what it says. Even if I change the 50 millimeters and apply changes, that doesn't do anything. That just added more mess. So, to be honest, that's probably the only thing I haven't taken seriously to change. I've always left these as 0.5 and just accepted that reality. Can you make a custom title block and border? Yes. Am I going to show that in this video? No. What I want to show you is how to work with what you have. So the things I'm going to show you to change, the biggest problem is right here. Oh, let me change the, um, the quadrants again. Instead of 50 uh, millimeters from center, evenly spaced, I don't want, I just want two and two the way it was originally. That way, that's all I get. Okay? So now, the bigger thing I want to change is the sheet. So when you see the next option underneath it, sheet format, you click on that, you right mouse button, and you go to properties. It takes you to the same place, sheet properties. Gosh darn it, you willikers. Well, that's not what I want. Even though you picked sheet format, even though you did right mouse button, even though you hit properties under sheet format, it still thinks that you're just changing the sheet properties. It doesn't understand that you want to change the actual title block. Got it? You're on your laptop. That's why. So, I don't, it, there's a modification on your, on your toy. If I go to sheet format and right mouse button, I have something called edit sheet format. When I click on that, that's where I want to be. Now I'm actually affecting the literally this, the actual title block. Okay, let me pull out of that. To get to sheet format elsewhere, you just click on like, for example, my sheet's called Daffy Duck right now. So I click on that right mouse button, edit sheet format. Now, I naturally went to that up front. Remember, I said, ooh, I, I shouldn't have done that right away. Because I want you to understand some of these other things. 
properties might be the natural place you go. Because in most software packages, you think to go to properties, not here. Sheet format, edit sheet format is where you go to edit your title block. Got it? In SOLIDWORKS, that's where you go. Lock sheet focus, doesn't matter too much to me. Add a sheet, that means if I have a sheet 2, a sheet 3, a sheet 4. When you do assembly drawings, you will have that. So you'll have an assembly page and then you'll have multiple details. So in our case, edit sheet format. Pretty much everything but this piece down here it says size, drawing number, revision, scale. That's about the only thing you're going to leave on here. The rest is pretty much junk. You're going to get rid of it. It's just taking up space. Yes, as a company, do I want to have a proprietary and confidential notification? You bet I do. And then when you double click on this, you can just, you see how it says insert company name here? That's where you put your company name. Okay, cool. Uh, this is if you have different revisions, different people involved. Unless otherwise specified, dimensions are in inches, tolerances, fractional, blah, blah, blah. This is there so that you can add to it, plus or minus, whatever, fractional, you know, a sixteenth of an inch. Get it? If you put a tolerance to your drawing. Two place decimals could be plus or minus something. Okay, interpret. Geome uh, geometric tolerancing per the material of the item, the finish of the item. You can go pretty deep, okay? And how many people edited the drawing because it's drawn by you, checked by somebody else. Then there's engineering approval, manufacturing appro approval, QA approval, any type of comments, things of that nature. We're not going to use any of that in this class. So for our, all of our intents and purposes, all of this is just hard enough some serious um, real estate that we need to use a different way. So you'll notice all I'm doing is picking everything and getting rid of it. So I'm, I, I am being a little careful in the sense that I don't want to delete this piece of it and this line I just want to trim it. If I go to sketch and trim, I just want to trim that. Uh oh, forgot. Okay, pick the last one. There. Trim that off. That's it. Now when I OK out of this thing, and I'm done with, now I can, I'm done with editing. Do you like this? Do you want to change this? See that? This is where I would actually change it. See how I can move it? I want it to be a different um, shape. I, let's say I want it to be a little higher, a little over. Come on, you. A little lower. I can drag it out. This is where you'd want to be doing that kind of work. If you want to tweak that, that outer perimeter. All of these tweaks, what do they do for you? They give you what? More drawing space. Whoops, wrong one. When you accidentally delete something, you want to undo it. So just go to uh, edit, undo. Accidentally hit the wrong item. So I'm trimming out a little bit. Come on, you. A little bit of my border. I would like to give myself how much space do you think? Interior space. <coughs> About ten and a half inches, wouldn't that be nice? How about here? I've only mm, seven point eight. Can I bleed out eight maybe? See that? Too much? Say again? How many people have an 11 by 17 printer in their house? 
How many of you have a B-sized printer in your house? That is the reason. That is literally the reason. How many companies do you think have a, access to a B-sized printer whose job is not engineering as a daily life? They're a customer. Most of them do not. Okay? Large format printers, and I know 11 by 17 may not seem like a large format printer, but it is. We have 11 by 17 here, so we're spoiled. So I agree with you. That should, that's, that's the first thing that comes to mind. I'll just go to a bigger size paper. But in reality, most of the time, you're trying to make something fit in an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper because 99.9% .9 of people will have access to an 8.5 by 11 printer. Some people do, but if they want to print it, because sometimes you have a boss from the 1950s who still wants to look at the printed hard copy, or they want to redline it and they want three people to sit in front of it and look at it and mark it up. Unless you have a tablet like I do, but a, a Surface Pro with a pen or something like that where you actually can do that, where you literally can mark a drawing up on the screen, or you have a, like, a, like my note, my phone, that has a pen feature and you use the write to PDF option, get it? There are ways, of course, that I can redline a PDF. Okay? But for the most part... Well, there's the, that's, that's the funny part. If I, des if I make this to a B-size piece of paper, guess what my text height's going to be? It's going to presume I'm printing to a B-size sheet of paper. So my text height will be a lot smaller because it thinks I'm printing on a bigger size sheet of paper. And that distorts the physical dimensions. I can't see them as clearly. I or you or somebody else, if you print what should be a B-size printout on, a, on an A-size sheet of paper, the dimensions physically get smaller. Those are the, all the reasons why we want to make this work on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. All the reasons. So if I make this change and I OK out of it, what do you notice when I get back out here? You see my dimensions? Gosh darn it, you willikers, right? No, you don't want that. If I update it, my dimensions still, still show. So you actually have to edit that sheet format, and you're going to have to delete those dimensions. Okay? Now, for an A-size piece of paper, do I really need my quadrant references at all? No, so I can remove those. But what's my problem down here in the corner? What did my my object do? Did it move to my new well, home location for this? What did it do? If I highlight all of this, what's it doing? Is it moving? This moves. But does this move? It's two separate items. Can you believe that? That's how they set it up. Please be aware of that reality. Okay, you notice that? You just have to be aware of that reality. You have to intentionally move them separately. Got it? Then you can okay out of this whole thing, and now you have a beautiful space to work with. That's much cleaner. Now the only thing I would change is what? Under zone parameters, do I want any? Let's see if that works. What did it do? The minute I did it. What did it do, guys? That went back to the side. Yep. Automatically. Notice that? See, when you pick these margins and you change it to 0 0.25, 0 0.25, which is really what we're doing when we did it the other way, to be honest. So I pulled those out. Do you notice how the letter still stayed? When I go to zone parameters and I go to drawing sheet properties, it, of all things, it drags me into here. Rows, columns, list number first. Is, I don't want those. That I don't want that information. I don't even want my zones in there. But when you go to your properties and you go to zone parameters, do I see zero as an option? 
Can I type in zero as an option? No. So for those of you who are going to get frustrated, please don't. It's okay. Don't worry. I know it's a limitation of the software. I typed in 100. It won't let me type in. I got to do it this way. It won't let me fix it. <laughs> One is the lowest you can go. Zero. You can't. You can't not have a zone inside um, SolidWorks. All right, guys. So it's okay for me if it prints out and it prints out like this. I'm not going to worry about it. Why? Because I know what the real problem is. Get it? I know where the issue is. But if you have a boss who's like, I don't want the zones in there, you're actually going to have to create a custom border. You're going to have to save it. I'm sorry, custom title title block. You may as well include the border with it. And that's how you get around these issues. Okay? Because the default one insists on having this kind of information. So we accept that reality. We accept that reality. Okay? Don't worry about it. I accept that reality. I know you're going to have that problem. So again, on the properties and zone parameters, you don't have a choice. Okay. When you go to edit sheet format, you can't control a few things. Let me see if I can control this guy here. If I'm happy with this, try it one more time. Let me see if I can affect that at all. Try to edit. No. It doesn't let me delete. It lets me select the nodes, but it won't let me delete those letters. You see that letter? It did let me trim. Yeah, but it won't let me get rid of it. Notice that? I'm stuck with it. Say again? Well, it's there. All I want to do is delete it. It won't let me delete it. Just be aware of that. It won't let you delete it either. Okay? That's all I'm trying to say. I don't have the level of ability to modify this thing in a standard format. I have to create a, a new border and title block. Got it, guys? That's what I'm trying to get at. If you wanted it better. So for now, I accept that it'll look like this, and you should too, so it's okay. The whole purpose of doing that is to maximize the amount of space you have for your detail drawing. And the purpose of that is what? Can I make this bigger now? Yeah, I can scale this up now. So instead of being relegated to half scale, what can I do? We could try. Now you'll notice over here it says use sheet scale. That's the default. So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to go to my Daffy Duck right here, my sheet, right mouse button, properties. Sheet scale is right here. So instead of half scale, let me change it to 101 and see what happens. Ooh, nice. Do I, do I have enough room for dimensions if I do this one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, so I kind of lose a little bit there. So let me change the scale again. I'm going to go to properties. Let's do three-quarter. Three and then four. Three-quarter scale. How about that? That might work. Now, we are missing some elements. Uh, let's drop in dimensions and see what we could do here. If I go to annotation, there's a couple of ways that I can do dimensioning. I can go and smart dimension. I can also do something to the right of it. Something called model items. Model items brings in whatever dimensions I created or added to my part when I was making the model for it. So when I think about that, Model dimensions 
will actually import all the dimensions into that view. For example, right now it says dimensions marked for drawing. I actually select everything for our purposes because I want to see everything that's going to come in. You have whole wizard profile, you've got whole wizard location, and now watch what happens. Whole callout. When you pick whole callout, whole wizard profile unchecks. Watch. These two toggle back and forth. I checked whole wizard profile, so now that's depressed, which means it's activated. But now this guy's deactivated, whole callout. If I click on whole callout, the other one deactivates. Got it? So it's one or the other, not both. That's what I'm trying to show you. Now there are no whole callouts in this thing because we didn't make any holes in this thing. So, FYI. If we had any annotations, weld symbols, any type of information, tolerances, that that's what sh that's, should be in here. Any type of reference geometry that we want, we'd want to check that on if we wanted to. Right now, I left these off because we don't have anything. Now, you have this option right here to say import items into all views. That will import them into all the views that it can put stuff in, but not the isometric. But not the isometric. Got it? So it's going to try to populate all the dimensions it can in the front view and the top view. That's what it's going to do. When you hit OK, uh, no model items were inserted. Choose yes to change import from, ah, to entire model. OK. So over here on the left, you see how it says selected features? It changed. Let me undo so you can see what it's going to do. It changed. When I did this, it changed. Model item, sorry. Instead of saying selected feature, you say entire model. That's how that gets fixed. Now, annoyingly, you see I said import items into all views. So I clicked on that. And I hit OK. But look where it dumped most of the dimensions. Over here in the top view. A m clutter of dimensions. And only a few are down here. Okay? That's the annoyance of SolidWorks. Detailing. It falls on its face and breaks its nose. Sorry. That's my personal opinion based on having to work with the product. So it it can do a better job. It doesn't. So if I want to just drop dimensions into one view, I click on that view. I don't turn on import items. I leave this alone. I'll say entire model, but I only want it to go into that one view. Then when I hit OK, I get something a little easier to work with. Okay? A little more manageable. Now, one of the things that I will tell you, and this is the warning that I gave you guys in the beginning, whatever you do in your model shows up in your detail drawing. Whatever you do in your model shows up in your detail drawing. So however way you dimensioned your model, your detail drawing reflects 100% of what you've done or haven't done. Got it? So to try to analyze why did it drop the dimensions the way it did, we can actually look at the model itself. So when we open that item, we're going to suppress everything and look at this thing. This is well dimensioned. If I look at the edit sketch, it's beautiful. It's got the sketch in this plane. It makes perfect sense to draw something like this. Everything is great. What view are those dimensions in? I, they're in the right side plane. They're in the right plane. All those dimensions are in the right plane, which means the dimensioning should be in the right view. Do I have a right view in my drawing? No, I do not. So let's check the next thing. The next one was a chamfer. Okay, that's beautiful. Then we've got the other chamfer. See that? Perfect. And then we added, it looks like we, yes, we had to add a plane so that we could build the, the blade. And that blade, if I look at the detail of that, that's beautiful. Everything looks great. The only reason the dimensions are coming out the way they are is because, do I have a right side view? Yes or no? No, that's that's a big piece of 
my dilemma here. And when I have a right side view, how should it be? Should it be like these dimensions here shouldn't be there at all, so I'm going to delete all those. The only dimension that makes any sense in this view is that one. So I deleted the rest. Did you notice that? We could put stuff in here, but this is a very complicated view. If you look at that view, that's a very complex view to work with. In this view, the most we can do, and this is, by the way, why they say instead of entire model, select a feature. Because then you can select the feature that you want to identify. It's a little slower process, but it's better. All right, guys? That's why you select the feature. Now, it only showed it, showed it on one side. Why only on one side? Because the chamfer is common on both sides. All right? So what you would do when you have a dimension like this, let me drop that back in there, sorry. Let me throw that in there. So that dimension, you're done dropping the dimension. You'd want to double click on it so that you can add, not, I'm sorry, I did that too fast. Click on it once, single click on it. So that after the dimension on the left side, you can add after a TYP in caps for typical, okay? Right now they are. You can change the decimal place value on an individual item like this, like what I just did. Okay, you can do it individually. If you want to do it as a group, I'll show you that in a little bit. Now I've got two dimensions in. Now it says 0.25, typical, but does that mean 0.125, sorry. Does that mean the other direction is also 0.125? What should I do to improve the way that this is written? Say again. Or can I add the word chamfer to the actual note? There's a few ways. You're right. I can say a 125 by 125, too, correct? This is where that individuality comes in. I can say 125 by 0 0.125. I can say 125, 45 degrees. There's a couple of different things I've seen on drawings over the years. So there's a little bit of, uh, whoops, I just hit it, my key. There's a little bit of, of freedom to how that is written out. All right, guys? So, and for now, just for the sake of today's conversation, I'll just put in chamfer and be done with it. All right? That'll look like that. Now, up here it gets complicated. This view is a very complex, complex looking view. I can't, if I did, I, I'll try it. Let's, let's give it a whirl and see what we can do. When we go to model items, if I pick this, I get that. That's very difficult to work with. So what I would recommend is you go to view layout and you do a detail of just that piece, a nice blow up. And your detail should be no hidden lines. Got it? One more time, watch. Under the View Layout tab, Detail View, click where you're going to start your circle. I'm going to make it a little tighter this time. I'm going to make a tighter circle. There's the detail. I'm going to drag it out here. I'm going to make sure that my detail has no hidden lines in it. Then I'm going to say OK. Now it was detail A, now it's detail B. Why did it switch to detail B? Because I deleted detail A. Every software product does this that I'm aware of. Okay? Inventor does it. Last time I checked, Solid Edge does it too. Can't 
tell you Pro E does it. It's been a while since I've used it. Too long. Okay? That is the detail. And the size of this thing. See this? When you look at your circle, see as I'm changing? See that? If I make the circle bigger or smaller, here it changes my detail there. Got it? Be aware of that. Because I've had students adjust this, and they're like, hey, why did my, why did this change? Because that affects that. All right? Be very aware of that. So, if you don't want it to be a circle, you have to make a picture. Meaning, make the image. For example, let's, let's try that just, just for fun. Under sketch, I have the option of making let's say that sketch okay so I made a rectangle then under view layout I go to detail that makes a circle notice that again detail it wants to make a circle see that See how I don't have the choice for profile? You notice that? Because what did it do? It drew a circle, correct? If I want this to be here, see how I drew the sketch? When I go to, to detail, where's the sketch? At what level is the sketch? Is it inside one of these? Embedded over here? No. It's only here. Right there. If I have it activated, I go to detail, ah, there it goes. It changed that to a circle, which drives me crazy. But you notice it's a rectangle? You see the rectangle? See how it's a rectangle? It picked that profile. It's the craziest thing. Why it does that? I cannot answer that question. But now you literally have it as a rectangle. When you hit OK, that's what you get. FYI. Still annoying, isn't it? That's how it does it. So if I changed my shape, let me just get a little creative here. I'm going to use a spline. Why? Just because. Because I want a little bit of a wave. So I'm going to drag not to drag it, I'm going to try to reshape it a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to put in another spline. Come on, you. God, I gotta get closer. Yeah. It's attached to something. Those are, that's some of the stuff you got to watch out for. There we go. And there. How's that? Cool. There's our weird shape. I've activated it. Now I go to view layout. Go to detail drawing. There's your weird shape cutout. Got it. Change this to A. Still says circle, even though it's no longer a circle. Style per standard, standard, broken circle, with leader, no leader, connected. Those are my choices. I don't have the choice of use the sketch I created. <laughs> you notice that? I don't have that choice. I can pick broken circle. I can pick with leader. Oh, then I get profile. Ooh, maybe then it'll work. See that? When I pick with leader, then I get profile as a choice. If I say broken circle, obviously it's a circle. Per standard, that's a circle. With leader. Huh? Uh, without leader, it'll work. No leader. Ta-da! Get it? So it won't work with the first couple. With leader, no leader. And then there's something called connected. And that draws a line from your detail to the big blow-up of your detail. Got it? So... Let's say no leader. How about that? 
All right, guys. And then here, we'll say with uh, with no hidden lines. All right. Who prefers this over that circle? Some of you. It's up to you. I don't care what you do. I just wanted to show you how to do it. Cool. Then you hit OK. Then you have that. You have this weird shape, which is created, and this detail of that shape. The shape is there to show that it's cut through. They don't have like a zigzaggy, broken, like like an inventor. You have something called broken view. They have something here called broken out sectional view, but not this kind of broken view. All right, guys? Yes. I don't know. But as far as why that scale, that's a, uh, you can change it. You can change whatever scale you want as far as that view. It says just use custom scale, three to two. Uh, what do you guys want? You want a different scale? That's fine. Uh, you can go two to one. See? It's up to you. If that, if that helps you in what you're doing, do it. Now, this is an example of where the views and the, and the detail don't match each other on scale. So this is an example where you must have detail and then scale right below it. Because the scale is not the same as it is on the other views. Get it? Your drawing scale is three-quarter, but your detail A scale is not three-quarter. So that's why you have to have that. Now, this is a view where, yes, when I go back to annotate, the whole point of doing this is so I could throw in my model dimensions into this view. Now it looks clear. These dimensions belong in a, in a broken out view. Not a sectional view, a broken out view. That way everything is clearly dimensioned. You will have to throw in some reference geometry, center marks for example, specifically, so that you have a place for your objects to go to, okay? You need a specific reference. See that? So that way you'll you'll have a clear indicator of where your dimensions are going to. See that? Because your drawing needs to make sense, not to you, but the person looking at it. Who isn't necessarily you? <laughs> Remember, we don't do drawings for ourselves. We draw them for other people. Now, as far as positioning, the software does no drafting standards. So it actually will, if you drag your dimensions out a little bit, they'll pop into known positions, known locations. See that? They'll snap into traditional spots. Why? Because they follow ANSI standards. Now, if I need to adjust those standards for some reason, that's on up here under tools. Is it tools? Where is it, guys? Do you remember? Tools? Where do I find everything that I want to change? Where I have access to all of my options? The little gear? Yep, the little gear. Tools and options. Or if I'm up here and I have my little, sorry, up here and I have my icons, the, the gear. In here, under system options, okay, you have all different types of elements in here. You have drawings, you have sketches, you have displays, selection, performance, assembly, yada, yada. Document properties, however, has detailing, okay, has grid, units, line font, line style, line thickness. Look familiar? All those settings that I talk about in other classes like AutoCAD that you have to manually input all the information in, products like SolidWorks and Inventor, I'll do it for you up front. What's missing in here, if you go to dimensions, um, it's not missing, it's just you don't have a really pretty visual overview image like you do in some other software. In here, you have to look at it. Here's the arrow information. Literally, look how detailed that is. Over here is your annotation. The first dimension it wants to be, you need to have it half an inch away. The second dimension above it should be how far away? Three-eighths. So 
So all those rules that we're applying, those drafting standards, you'd actually have to input that information. Okay, gaps, any type of gaps you might have. Primary precision, you ask that question. This is the default precision is two decimal places. Let's say your entire drawing had to be set to three or four decimals. This is where you want to change that. So I told you earlier I'd show you where to change that. I'm telling you now. That's where you change it. Right there. Primary precision. Dual precision, when you have a drawing that's in inches and you have the metric next to it in parentheses for reference or vice versa. You have a metric and the inch reference next to it, whichever way, that's that. Any type of fractions that you're going to display, how do you want them displayed? Bent leaders, what kind of leader length are we looking at? Zeros, trailing zeros. We usually show trailing zeros. For example, if it's a drawing that's 1.00 is the length, we usually say 1.00. We're not going to say 1. If you had trailing zeros removed, then it would only show 1. Yes? Can you change this Change the what? When you change this, yeah. it changes the drawing. If you want it, here in this room, yes. If you're setting up your own, no, you can set it up as a template. And then all you do is activate that template. And then all your settings are in there. In this room, yes, because we have deep freeze on our computers. And the way that we had IT load the software, we loaded it as if it was a brand new install. I told them to make no changes to the settings. I did that intentionally. So that way you have an out of the box experience, whether you like it or not. I didn't fix anything. I did that intentionally. I need you to know that the default setting in SolidWorks is to not show hidden lines. That's an important one, because I know that gets missed. Okay, so you need to remember to do that. You want your hidden lines on. It is not the default setting of the software. <clears throat> Something else you can do when you drop in, you can actually set this thing up. That when you drop in your uh, views, the dimensions drop in with it. All the software products do that. But the default on all of them is not to do that. And that one I think is a good choice, to be honest. So, center between extensions, all of this, you can, you can affect everything. They have a radial diameter, liter, snap angle, so like your dimensions automatically want to snap to 15 degrees. That's good. That's actually very good. I like that. Extension lines. Extension lines are those gaps, these vertical lines that attach the dimension line, which is the line with the dimension on it, to the object that line that extends on the side. So the gap is from the object to the dimension, to, to the extension line. That gap is too small. 0.05 is ridiculously tiny. That one you change to an eighth of an inch, 0.125. The beyond dimension, dimension line, that's a little too long. You don't want it to be an eighth of an inch. That would be 0.0625, okay? So when I look at the settings, these are the types of changes I would I would make to the software. Hello? Oh, there you go. It's just so oh, come on. Seriously? Alright. It won't go to it won't move. Okay, let me hit OK. There we go. When it updates, it updates everything. Now your dimensions are an eighth of an inch away from your part. Now your extension beyond dim line is only a sixteenth of an inch. You want those types of changes. What isn't there because these dimensions pre-exist, that snap, you know, that you want it to be three-eighths of an inch away, that's not in there, okay, because these dimensions preceded you doing that. Got it? So that one, if I drop it here and I pull it out, it goes, this is the the marks that it wants to go to. There it goes. It snaps to certain positions, but not necessarily where you want them to. So it's not, not as perfect. 
If you are using a software product like AutoCAD, you can precisely locate the dimensions. You will not have as much control in a software package like this or, or Inventor. So there's some things you'll just have to accept when it comes to certain elements. And this is one of them. Like this item here, if I snap it to here, that's okay. But this dimension, I don't really have the ability to snap it exactly where I want to. If I check, just, just for the sake of argument, I'm not even able, yeah, I can't even dimension from one dimension to the other to see how far away they are from each other. So that particular element, for those of you that are really picky about where your dimensions drop, you will not have as much control, okay? And I know that. But you do want them spaced neatly from each other so that you have clarity in what you're looking at. Get it? Because somebody else needs to be able to read your drawing, not you. Now, do we, should we do a sectional, guys? I think we agree that we need a sectional, right? Now, our drawing is getting a little crowded, even though this is, um, this is two to one scale, right? It's kind of big. <laughs> We are missing one very important dimension, and that's from here to here. We're missing this dimension. Now, you'll notice the dimension that you drop in by yourself, you see that individually? Do you notice its color? What color is it? The dimension I dropped in by myself versus the model dimensions that were imported, that were populated from the model. See the dimension I dropped in is gray, whereas the other dimensions are a solid color. That I do like about SolidWorks. There is a visual difference between the dimensions you put in the drawing and the dimensions that came from the model. This is important. The model dimensions, if I didn't clarify, when you go to modify a model dimension, guess what it's going to modify? Anyone want to guess? You got it. It's going to literally modify the model. So if I type in 1.25, you see how everything started hatching up a little bit? You see all these little, little colorful hatches? When I update this, it literally changed my blade. It changed my blade. If I change it back, watch up here. See how close this arc is to this line? Watch. If I change it back to 1.08, I hit OK. OK, now watch. The update. See how it literally changes the model. So now all of a sudden I have a detailed drawing that's driving my model. Not just the other way around where my model drives the detailed drawing. We knew that would happen, right? We knew that if you made changes in your model, your detailed drawing would update, correct? That's a given. But you might not appreciate or realize that if, if you use model items and bring in the actual dimensions from your model, you can drive your model as well. Your detail drawing becomes an actual modeling tool, not simply just the drawing. If, however, you do drop all the dimensions in by yourself and use a smart dimension feature, guess what you do? You negate that power. You take it away. You no longer have that control. Yes. Yep. It literally changed the model. Sure. It changed it. It added. The blade's way past. You see the blade is way past the model? You notice that? I'm not <laughs> you didn't believe me. That's okay. I have nothing up my sleeves. No problem. It's okay. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. All the software packages do this. That's the power of the tool. This is why people move to parametric modeling. And they ask that question. This is why. What's the point? The point is I have greater control of modifying my existing product. Did you hear the way I said that? The power of a parametric product is not in drawing. 
It's in modifying. That's where the power of the software comes in. And again, you rebuild. They use rebuild. It looks like a um, traffic signal. See that little symbol? When you click on that, it updates the truck. And then if you want to look at the model again, just in case, it updated the model. See, the blades are shorter now. It does that. It's a beautiful thing. So, <clears throat> that's the biggest thing that you need to appreciate, are the, the, the power of, of why would I want to use model items? Why don't I just go ahead and detail it out old school? Because I want to control my model from my detail drawing. Got it? That is why. That's literally why. Other than that, I'm lazy as can be. I have absolutely zero interest in putting any extra work into this product. My customer is not going to pay me more because I detailed this model out. They don't care. They need the detailed drawing. They're not going to pay me for my modeling work either, correct? They want to approve the product. They're not even going to pay me for, for this work. What they're going to pay me for is the product they get. Get it? So you have to build all these costs, all this effort into, into your product. <clears throat> but what you would do is to work efficiently, to minimize the amount of time that you spend to make a detailed drawing, you use model items. So all the dimensions that exist in your model now coexist in your detailed drawing. That's why when you were doing your models, I kept saying, leave your dimensions in your model, don't delete them. If you delete the dimensions in your model, which of course means you're deleting your constraints as well, let's be honest, you don't want to do that. But if you do, if you choose to delete all your dimensions in your model, you've completely eliminated all your dimensions availability in your detail drawing. Because there are no model items. Get it? Without one, the other doesn't exist. So now you have one, but you, what do you need? We need a, a this is too big, guys. I think this is too, I, I think we're going to run out of room. So what's another good option? Instead of two to one, three to two? Three to two looks good. We'll leave it at three to two. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's okay. Now, I, I made a really tiny isometric that I keep shoving around <laughs> all the way. <laughs> See that little dude? Poor little dude. Because I'm trying to figure out where we're going to put our uh, our next item, which is the um, sectional. So when we go to view layout, we have sectional view. Now the way SolidWorks chooses, chooses to do sectionals, it has section, which are your traditional horizontal, I'm sorry, vertical, horizontal, a auxiliary sectional view, auxiliary sectional view, and then a rotated slash aligned sectional view. This this aligned one is the one you're going to use when you make the detail drawing of this dude, 4 of 24. Remember that. 4 of 24 right here. That's going to get this guy, the aligned sectional view. This dude over here, 9 of 24, it's going to be an offset sectional view, which could be done with horizontal or vertical, depending on which way you go. And I'll show you guys that on a different uh, record session. So for this one, we just want a half section, which means of all things, I don't go to section, I click on half section. It's got two little butt toggle buttons. One is section, and the other one is half section. So when I pick half section, I have to identify what is it that I want. The bottom half, the top half. <laughs> See how you have all these choices. I'm picking this guy, which is the bottom side right. Maybe it's the bottom side left. We'll find out. Meaning which section am I keeping? So if I pick bottom side left, you'll see what it does. Now, if I pick the wrong side, it's no big deal because I have the opportunity to flip direction at will. See that? So it's okay. Let's say we pick the correct one, we drop it out here, and what do we notice? It gives us a half sectional, but it's too big. Nope, don't, we don't need a B-size. I know that's always the answer. 
But what are the other solutions? What kind of sectional view can we do? A slice sectional view, which is slices everything out except what I'm sectioning. See it? Right down here. That's acceptable. Okay. If I leave it the other way, see that? Shows everything. When I do a slice sectional, it only shows me what I've sliced through. That's acceptable. Okay. You can emphasize the outline if you want. That makes it thicker. Doesn't matter to me. But I would pick a slice sectional. That's what I would recommend. The letter reference, since the first one's A, I recommend you pick B. You have to manually document that. Then you hit OK. So now you'll have BB, because that's how it does it. What's this 8 in the middle of my thing for? What is that 8 reference, guys? How many ribs? I'm sorry, how many blades? How many blades? Eight. That's why. So you can have eight over here somewhere else and just say, just click on it once and just say eight blades. Is it up there or where? Where would you put it? You put the word blades down here. Then you hit OK. So it says eight blades now. You can. I'd have to. You know what? I can't. I'd have to put it in parentheses just to make it more logical for me. <laughs> Whenever you do it, though, it keeps bouncing it somewhere else, so you're going to have to drag it back. Eight blades, detail A. See that? I put them together next to each other. By the way, the 8 is a pattern, is the pattern designation. So if I change this to 9 or 10 or 12, what do you think is going to happen to the blades? Am I going to get more blades or fewer blades? If I change this to 10, what do you think is going to happen, guys? Oh, yeah. All of a sudden, I change it to, to 10, and when I update this thing, guess what I get? Ten blades. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If I double click on this again, change it back to eight, update, I get eight blades. Get it? Cool? Beautiful, isn't it? Again, my model elements are driving my detail dry. Got it? I'm not done detailing it. Now, when I go into here, this is where I probably want to say, give me some model items in this view. This is what you want. You want to select the features. You want it to drop what it can. Those are beautiful. Those are exactly the dimensions I want. Which ones are these, guys? The initial two dimensions, right? So I know the height. And what else? Say again? Yeah. The chamfers I don't have. See, I could, I could say, you know what, now I can take that out of there, and my chamfers would be better here. Yes? What do you think? Silence. <laughs> Silence is golden, I guess. I'm going to pick my two objects. Did it do it? Did it do it? Let me see. It's got the 25 in here. But the other one chose not to appear. Um, you know why? Because it's there. I gotta delete it from there. So the 25's here. I can fix that. Because then I want it pointing down here. That's the chamfer. That's the point .25 chamfer. Got it? The other one, this dude... Let me see if I can fix it now. Model items, and I pick it here. It says no dimensions inserted. 
Why? Dimension of chamfer 1 can be inserted into drawing view 2. It's being a pain in the badinsky. It only wants to drop that item here. FYI. So this one is an example where I gotta fight with it. So if I try to, to move it, I don't think I can. And if I wanna move this thing to a different place, typically what you do is you delete the dimension from a particular view, and then you go to a new view and say, I want that dimension there. That's usually what you do. In this case, I get a no-go. It wants to only drop it into this view. FYI. So this one's in this one. I don't want to change its dimension, I just want to add after it. Chamfer. Typical. But that's only for these two sides. Annoyingly, I can't get this one in there. Okay? Anything else we're missing? We don't have to detail this out because what do we learn when we did this thing? What did we find out? All of these dimensions, what do they really translate into? This basic shape with those two chamfers, yes or no? Yep, yep. so you can get away with without doing it. If you have a client that insists on seeing all these dimensions, then you will have to put them in. How would you do that? By hand, manually. You just go to Smart Dimension, and you literally would dimension from this point to this point, and drop a dimension. Get it? Uh, ditto for the other one, from this point to this point, and drop in the dimension. Now, you notice how the 1.1, if I drag this up a little bit and get it out of the way. See this guy? If you want to, um, if you have an, a feature, an element that you don't want to see, like this one has the center line right here, you have the ability to right mouse button, you should be able to just delete it, and it's gone. Got it? Now, this guy, you see how the arrows are sticking out? Let's say you want to get those arrows to bounce in. When you double, you see the little nodes right there? Double click on it, or single click on it. You go in and out. See that? So that's how you would control the arrows to bounce in or bounce out. Got it? Click on, you gotta click on the node. Not on the, the you got it. You gotta click on the node. It's not correct to have this. That's the way I'm actually going to phrase it. You see this overlapping business right here? You really don't want your, your, your dimension line and your arrow to be overlapping something else. So that's not correct. Because of that, you want to bounce this in. However, if in the act of bouncing it in, it starts doing this to your dimension, that's a no-go. You don't want your arrows in inside your dimensions. If that happens, you're going to have to drag your dimension out. Okay? I know that's not the clearest way to answer your question, which is which way is better, but it's the only way I can answer it because it is situational. So if this was, if this, if this was crossing like this, I'd have to tell you to put it in. If this was in, embedding each other this way, I'd have to tell you to pull this dimension out. Okay, that's what I would have to tell you to do. That, and this is a no-go. You see how these two dimensions are piled on top of each other here? That's a no-go. You would have to pull your objects out. So you have a nice, clean space. 
but I'm waiting. You see, you see how I'm moving it? I'm trying to find where it's going to pop. It's not going to pop anywhere. This one does, but the other one does not. So you want it spaced away neatly from your object. That's a no-go. It's overlapping the title block. See that? So those are some of the limitations when we're looking at why would I do one thing versus another. This I could drag up probably a little more. This dimension I could probably drag down a little bit. See how I'm moving things around a bit? Maybe over here. Now what's going on here? That has to get moved. So detailing, this is a no-go. See that? This dimension interfering like that, you got to move it out. See? So you can't have dimensions on top of each other. You can't have your, your objects overlapping a title block. If this drawing was uh, smaller, it doesn't have to be. This is at what scale? Three-quarter scale, and it's beautiful. The what mark? For what? The units of measurement? It's in inches. What do you mean? Okay. So this isometric is stuck over here in the corner. I can probably drag this out over here. Make it a little nicer. So that way I could drag these over a bit. Drag this over a bit. So I can edit this a bit. See, the eight blades is a separate item. It, it doesn't slide with anything together. Notice that? Now I've given this a little bit more space, so maybe now I can make that isometric a little bigger. So instead of a quarter, maybe two-thirds is too much. What else is there? What else is there? User defined. Five eighths. Seven sixteenths. Get it? See what I'm doing? Does the scale of my isometric view matter? Nope. It is there for pictorial representation only. Now, if it did actually serve a specific purpose in your detail drawing, that's a different conversation. Got it? But for the sake of this particular detail drawing, it is there purely for visual reasons. Not to do anything else. It's there to just show you what the thing looks like. And that's it. That's how you do a detail drawing of something like this that has a broken out view, not a broken sectional Okay, that's not what I did. All I did was do a detail view. I did a detail view, not a broken sectional view. I did a detail view. And I intentionally did a detail view not using a circle. All right, I did that intentionally. The, the odd shape is a product of the odd sketch I drew. All right, guys? Cool? I wanted to show you a few unique things today while also showing you how to detail this relatively unique looking part. Cool. All right. So I'm going to end the bit. Correct. It's a half sectional. And yes, this is how SolidWorks does half sectionals. I don't want to have the conversation about why. I've learned to accept the fact that you have this extra arrow here, which in the real, in drafting standard land, we don't use. But in SolidWorks land, you have. All right, guys? I know. You're only supposed to show B. You're not supposed to show this one. I know that. That arrow with the B is not my choice. That's what SolidWorks does. It throws that in there. This thing right here? This? This is a SolidWorks thing. This arrow with this extra arrow with the B? That's not me. Okay? That's, that's them. If you go look at how they do sectional views, I have absolutely no clue why they do it that way. I'm just telling you that's what you do. Cool? Whether you like it or not. You can't hear the, the, the frustration in my voice on that one? I'm sorry.
I'm not being frustrated enough. Because I don't like that. It's how the product does it. That'll end this video.